Boom. Hey, what's up? Ward Wrestling Live. Man, we are here again. Today, it feels like the rest of my summer. I was doing four a day up until like three weeks ago. And when people started getting out and about, I kind of went down to two a day. But then people start calling. So now I'm doing three and four. And it's all mixed up, which is great. But today's been a four a day. You guys are number three. Um, anyway, Ward Wrestling Live, I'm here with a pretty cool kind of setup. We got Top Gun. They own Top Gun Fitness. Uh, building bodies and roughhouse wrestling, which uh, you'll, you'll see Haley Horwart. Hor that's Haley, and that's uh, Blaze, and then and then we have a, a young Mickey Filippi, the pit wrestler, uh, on the mat down there doing big things. Sorry, I, I kind of just screwed all that up. We got Coach Bunchy too. Uh, he runs the roughhouse program, uh, but they do. Uh, She's a nurse and, and a, a Zumba instructor, and she owns the building bodies and the Top Gun Fitness. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and then we got Coach Bucci, <laughs> who, who wrestled at Pitt back in 2000 and early 2000s, and uh, he's the coach and runs, uh, runs Rough House up there. So uh, doing awesome, pretty cool concept, uh, and, and they all kind of work in conjunction with each other. So um, – Mickey Filippi, owner, cool. coaches, awesome. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. I do appreciate it. It's an absolute Thanks for having pleasure. us. Yes. And if I didn't mention it, they're in Derry, Pennsylvania, about 45 miles east of Pittsburgh, right? Yep. All right. right. I got that all out in one breath. Well, <laughs> how are you guys? Uh, today, man? Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Mickey, I know it's, it's been a busy time for you trying to get your books, get ready for school again. Uh, you've been on campus today, so that's super cool. Um, but first of all, I mean, obviously the big, you know, the big monkey in the room or elephant in the room or whatever that saying is, is, is COVID, right? We've had it everywhere. Some states are better now. Some states aren't high, low causes, but uh, you guys are in PA and there's been a lot of conversation of on, off, whatever. But being that you guys own three gyms, um, it, it's had to have been you know, it's kind of affected you guys, right? What, what, what have you guys had to do this summer as far as keeping your yeah. business? Well, our gym, Rough House Wrestling, Top Gun Fitness, and Building Bodies are all in one big place. We're a big entity. You're looking at the Top Gun room and the Rough House room, you're behind us. So we were closed down. I want to say the date was mid-March. It was maybe the week of the NCAAs, I think is when that all kind of fell through in Pennsylvania. And we were just completely shut down from top to bottom. Nothing was going on for a bit of time. Um, I think within the week, we had some virtual stuff for our general gym members going on. And pretty quickly after we started that, we realized that it kept everyone connected. I don't know if everyone can remember back to March and what all that felt like. I know Mickey <laughs> probably has nightmares about his end of March. Um, but yeah, certainly, you know, everything in wrestling was immediately shut down as well. And I think we kind of all came together pretty quickly and realized that we have the skills and the talent and the ability to put some stuff out virtually. So we quickly jumped on that horn. Um, between Blaze, my husband, Sean, and Vicky, we kept a lot going on for the kids in the club. Uh, so we had Facebook Live workouts pretty quickly that were kind of short and sweet, kind of like into Top Gun and um, wrestling, fitness. And then within, I'll say about 30 days, we transferred that over to Zoom, opened nice. that up to the club and we're doing more of a training style. Blaze was running some of those um, workouts and training where he could see the kids. Uh, so we would do fitness training and then the, the wrestling itself. Uh, Mickey was part of that as well. and. Another one of our studs, Travis Schaefer, was involved. Uh, another pit wrestler. Wow, and and Blaze, how? Pit. Yeah, how have you been able to? Go ahead. Have you have you guys um, been staying? How have you been able to keep them mentally, the kids mentally okay? Because I'm sure doing zooms and things like that, but you probably had to, I'm sure, stay in contact with them. Be like, look, we'll get through this. Everything will be all right. Don't do anything stupid. It's all right. Well, you know, the kids are young. Like, we don't have them at, at any high school. It's like eighth grade and under. 
So really for these kids, I think it was just getting to do anything. Like they were happy. By the time we started doing the virtual stuff, everybody was chomping at the bit to do something, anything. So when I saw them, like say over the computer, they were just ready to go. You know, everybody was excited to be moving. Parents were excited to have their kids doing something um, structured, you know, instead of just sitting around. Yeah, that's like awesome. That itself was good. Yeah, and you could see a lot of uh, a lot of people in Pennsylvania were putting out some really good content for the kids. I mean, you really you could see the guys up there at M two. You could see Jody Stripmatter. You could see. Um, I mean, I go down the whole list. You guys have seen them on my show, and uh, it, it's been really good to see how the the wrestling community quickly came together and did that. Um, Mickey, so. Talk about um, a little bit about your summer adjustments you had to make to get yourself ready for what is this? Is this your senior year? So uh, for you guys, if you don't know Mickey, he's a he, uh, his freshman year. He wrestled at Virginia the last two or three seasons. He's been at Pitt now, and uh, that's probably where he's going to stay. Uh, he's here with us today, uh, which I, I really appreciate that. But um, yeah, how, how has your summer gone and what was it like to be back on campus today? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, my summer was honestly, it was a really good summer for me because I, I was able to train a ton, fortunately, with building bodies like Top Gun, that like Rough House, all of that together. I was able to use that and uh, make gains that maybe a lot of people weren't able to do because they didn't have access to that. But um, it was weird. I mean, when season ended last year, because there really wasn't any closure, but like I never, without the closure, I mean, I never really stopped training. Uh, as soon as it was over, I just went home and continued to train and haven't stopped since. And now we're approaching another school year and uh, we're in the room practicing as a team, which is cool. Uh, it's like, it's different. We're only allowed in like so many at a time. And we started as groups of 10 and then we went to groups. Of, now I think we're at like groups of 20 or something like that. And uh I don't know how long it's going to stay like this, but then we're supposed to gradually start getting together more and more. But um, yeah, it's good to be on campus. Uh, it's really cool like to actually be doing something and life be a little bit normal here. Uh, although, I mean, it still is a, it still is weird. Like I have a lot of zoom classes rather than in-person classes, but I mean, yeah, this summer, the only, I really, the only adjustment was I wasn't at pit training. I was at home, but I mean, I was training just as much and it really made me uh, get a sense of like not taking things for granted, you know, sure, cause you I never know that. when you're going to lose that. So yeah. this summer made me feel like it was almost like being a little kid again. I said, <laughs> cause like I used to train in the summer all on my own and like run, like go on runs to the gym, which is my brother. Uh, my brother's one who owns the gym. I used to run, from like home to the gym and then work out and run back. And I started doing that again. It was like, it's weird. It feels like, I'm, uh, it felt like I was, I don't know, a freshman in high school, not a junior in college. <laughs> life life, life kind of went full circle for you. Yeah, for sure. For now, sure. I've got a question. I know um, some, uh, some colleges are, uh, are testing the wrestlers. They come in, they get tested. They got to wait 15, 20, 30 minutes. And then, uh, everything's good. They get in the room. Have you started to see um, testing starting to happen with the athletes or is it too? Yeah. I mean, we have like random tests. It's just at random. They'll have like uh, a group of guys get tested at random, but it's, it was uh, when we came back, they said everyone can get tested if they wanted to, but if you're not symptomatic, then you don't have to, but at some point everyone will be tested. Um, sure. Because, like I said, it's it's random. So, like, I could get – next week they could just say, hey, we want to test you and a couple other guys. So, it's at random. So, I'm sure we'll all end up being tested. Yeah, and that's kind of good because they make sure that you're, you're doing what you're supposed to because you, you never know when they're going to come and get you with that test. So, Oh, awesome. yeah. We have, we have strict guidelines. Like, we're not allowed to be um, – we're really not as much as I said, it's normal to be back here. Like it's not normal. Like we're not allowed to go hang out with like other groups of people. It's really just stay within the team. Uh, and if you're not within the team, like, and you get caught, like you're probably going to get in trouble. So for the most part, it's just been like, we've been within the team and we're not leaving that. So. Nice. Well, um, 
Well, Haley, I, I know the the big thing, and, and you and I went back and forth for a while on on mess. I slid into your DMs. Is that what they call it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I slid into your DMs. Um, right. Yeah, I got the lingo. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> um, um, but I know that uh, it's something that's been very important to you, and, and you really wanted to to talk about it and just let people know what they should be doing, what you guys are doing, what your opinion is on, on this COVID and yeah. um, go ahead, please take it from there. Sure. Um, kind of a unique situation at our gym. We were talking about being closed and being forced to be closed and thinking back to March, you know, you, you try to butcher what I do for a living. Um, I'm a nurse <laughs> anesthetist, which means I'm part of anesthesiology at the local hospitals. So I actually work in Allegheny County. I work near Pittsburgh. But was that part and, uh, of your, that, that had to be part of your lesson was break down that word and learn how to say it? Yeah, if you can say it, then you can do it. Okay, good. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> um, I actually went to Pitt too. So I trained there at Pitt and kind of fell off the back of the hill. Now I work in Fox Chapel. But a big part of what happened at our local hospitals when uh, COVID struck was acutely ill people coming to the emergency room needing care immediately. So we got to see that whole part of COVID and it was very scary. So when we were shut down, uh, I was kind of relaying this to everyone, basically my whole family, Mickey knows this too, because I was manic for a little while, but it was very scary. And we had to create protocols quickly for our own safety and for the safety of the patients that we were treating. So that was easy then to slide over to the gym. So you can kind of break down what we learned and what we developed using research, um, actual evidence, science, and we're able to bring in sort of a balanced, responsible protocol to reopen the facility. And I think what's interesting about wrestling is wrestling kind of gets, I mean, Mickey, Mickey talked about it, Blaze talking about it, like when you're a wrestling family, you're a wrestling family, it, it's kind of difficult. You were even talking about your son you kind of get a fever and a fire for it and it's what what you do what your life is kind of all about in western pennsylvania that's a big part of being an athlete as a young kid so for us to reopen the gym it was definitely you know a passion that we need to get these kids back in the room and wrestling really gets a bad rap in that sense because everyone thinks it's contact so with all the kids being on top of each other how can you possibly be safe he already spoke to this a little bit in the way that Pitt's handling it. Um, and if if you're from Florida, so you may not know, but Pitt and who I work for, UPMC, it's a big medical system. They're one big entity. So kind of like the same ideas sort of go back and forth between the college and the medical center. Um, if you're wrestling and you're wrestling with a small group of kids or a smaller group of kids, then all in all, if you're all practicing the same way and you're all sort of kind of staying in your bubble, so to speak, your transmission rate should decrease in and of itself. And then, I mean, Blaze can speak to this, but when he has kids in the room, generally the partners are staying within maybe three, four, five different kids. So the contact is kept within those children alone. Um, going a little bit further into it here at the gym, you know, we're really fortunate. You can see the kind of ventilation we have in our room. It's a, it's a pretty big room. Um, along the side here, you can't see blazes. These are all garage bays. So those just open right up. Oh, nice. And then we're basically operating in an open air system, which is really super helpful. Yes. Yeah, so we open those garage doors and we have a screen. Her husband put up uh, screens on two bays. So those are open and parents can stay outside. They don't come in at all. They stay outside, but they can still watch and hear um, what we're doing inside. And it, it works, you know, and that the parents actually like it. They sit and they tailgate, you know, out in the parking great, lot. Watch their kids that's a great idea. With the, that's a great idea with the screens because um, I think a lot of clubs right now, uh, I mean, the coaches have to stand outside and kick the parents out because it's never a sport where – you dropped the kid off and left. It wasn't like dropping a kid off yeah. at a soccer field or a football Oh, yeah. Field. Parents always want to be right in the room watching. But this is kind of – they didn't fight this at all. We didn't even really have to tell them because 
it's kind of more comfortable outside and they're right on the mat right there really so they're there yeah for pennsylvania it's good can you imagine 110 degrees in our summer heat oh parents you have to sit out there. Yeah. they would probably just pitch like a pop-up tent or something yeah like i said they sit they put the hatch up on their car sit on the bumper you know how cool is that what a great idea yeah it works out what, what a great idea so, so you made all those adjustments, um, Haley. I know you were you were talking about. Um, so now you guys have. Are you are you guys in Pennsylvania able to have club practice now, or is it still yeah. kind of on the on the fence? Because we hear stuff, we hear stuff on the news, but we don't live. No, there. our our governor clearly he's a, a Democratic governor, a little bit uh, more on the liberal end of things, right? So. In a sense, when you look at the politics of the nation, in a sense, he's a little bit more strict with his guidelines than some other places. Um, in addition to that, if you take that one step further and you look at our prevalence rates in the state of Pennsylvania for those tested, because you always have to take things and say what they actually are versus what you hear. Um, for those <laughs> tested, the prevalence rate is somewhere between six and 7%. Here in Westmoreland County, we were kind of joking if thrown a few tosses about Iowa earlier. Um, we're very rural here. So across our gym and down this road that we're on is all cow pastures, right? <laughs> so our prevalence rate here is 3.7%. Now that's the entire demographic that's being tested. That's not necessarily the kids that are in our room. You know, now we're facing that where we're, we were talking, Blaze and I, about our kids we both have school age kids and you know, our school district is putting out all their information literally today. So we're listening to that and we're kind of gauging where that's going to head. And what we're finding is that the kids aren't really going to be the ones that are going to be the trouble as far as COVID is concerned. It's, it's going to be, if anything, can kids be asymptomatic and transfer it to an elder, whether it be us, whether it be a teacher, whether it be a grandparent. But it's difficult because we don't know that yet. Isn't that a lot of the big concern like like that's what my that's my wife obviously she doesn't want her kids to get sick and there's a concern there but there's more of a concern of they bring it back and she has to close down her practice because she's sick for two weeks or whatever so isn't that right. the, isn't that the larger concern that they're worried about the kids bringing it home rather than the kids being affected by it yeah absolutely and the struggle with that is kind of the struggle that we had earlier in March is if you look at all of the research that we can find from places like South Korea, China, uh, England, France, Spain, we really don't have that kind of data just yet. We have more ambiguous data that's going back and forth. If I could gander, I would say that it, it, it's going to prove that we're going to have these kids here. The kids are going to go back to school. And although there's going to be exposure and although folks are going to get sick, this virus will have dissipated to some extent and we're going to find that we're going to end up making it through. That's going to be my guess is that yeah. things are going to pan out marginally. Okay. I like that. Your be, that's my prediction. I like that prediction and the guess. Now what's that? I see. I said, I like your prediction and your guess. I love it. But um, I got a question we, we, we see it and I'm sure you're on top of all this because of what you do. Um, there's talk that there's been something called saliva direct, which is um, a new testing that they're they're coming forward with or something. I don't know if you've read about it, where um, they don't have to stick that thing all the way back to your brain now. They they kind of can get it from the front and do whatever they got to do. But uh, I don't know if you've read about that yet. I yeah. just that the other day. I think you said saliva because my internet cut out. Did you say saliva? Saliva direct, yeah. What you I think that's what it's called, saliva, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, could you see yeah. something like that will make a difference where kids can get tested right on the spot? Sure. I mean, we have fast, we have rapid tests now at UPMC. We're talking about Pitt. We have rapid tests. You know, when you look at the algorithms that are out there and you look at, uh, me personally going to work, working with patients that have COVID, documented cases of COVID, we're not testing everybody, right? That's the absolute truth. And that's real-time truth. That's, that's 
me going to work and seeing what I see every day. Um, I don't know that really there, I guess there's two ways out of this, right? You test every single person, whether they're symptomatic or asymptomatic, and you get a true pre prevalence rate, segregate the folks that are sick, deal with it like that, or you march through it and try to restart your society and try to hinge off of the exposures that come about, right? And test as they come about. And it seems like here in Pennsylvania, that's kind of where we're headed now. We're going more the, the latter, where we're going to slowly start to unveil and layer back on school athletics, which we're a club, we're private. Our school systems are very kind of, we don't know what's going to happen yet, even with fall sports, let alone winter sports like wrestling. So we're not sure what's going to happen with all of that. But it seems like the approach is going to be in the you know, near future that we're going to restart see what we come up with, see what happens basically, and try to contact trace, develop exposure plans, just like we have at work. And if you are come in contact with someone, and I mean, I, I would be amiss to say that we don't know, you know, both myself, Blaze, I'm sure Mickey, we all know someone who has had COVID or has been suspected of it. And it's just a matter of working through every single one of those exposures to keep it out of the room to keep it out of Mickey's room, to keep it out of his workplace, my workplace, and try to do it in a smart, open, communicative way versus shutting everything down, testing everybody, because I don't even think that we could possibly find the resources to do that at this point. For sure. We have the tests that work, but they're not plentiful. Right, and, um, and, and just to kind of obviously put a bow on this, what do you say to the people that are like, oh, yeah, but the – the rapid tests are, are not as accurate as the ones that go in your nose, so that can be false. I, I don't disagree with you. <laughs> I don't disagree with you, but in the same sense, I've come in contact this close to COVID patients, certainly have had protection on. I've also had coworkers who have come that close to folks and not have protection on or the appropriate level of protection and not converted the virus. Oh, so it's no. difficult to gauge, you know, the virility of that. And, and truly, what what does it come down to? Does it come down to viral loading and how much virus you, you bring in? Or is it just simply you touch it, you have it? And I don't think that that could possibly be the case at this point. Or I think all of us would be sick. Right, because you're around it every day. Yes, I had, right. a, uh, I had a ref on Leslie Tamayo out in... I think it's Arizona, New Mexico, somewhere out there. Leslie, sorry if I screwed up your city, but um, I just mess everything up, right? I'm just terrible. But uh, she worked in the medical field too, and she was really passionate. If you go back and look at the beginning of her interview with me, she really spoke about it. She's like, look, I know there's people out there that think this doesn't exist. I come to work every day. I see people sick. I see people dying. The virus is there. Now, on the other side of it, how do we do what you're saying? And and start exactly, to live yeah. um, so that's crazy. Um, well, you know, we have been, like, I feel like we're all experts now on how to <laughs> mitigate, you know, yeah. things you've never thought you'd have to know or do in your life, right? So we're all experts on that. We've been, in, been doing it for what, three months? <laughs> Almost but, three months, yeah. So, but, you know, there's a point where you have to say, you know, what's it hurting on the other side? Like, kids not getting to do things or not getting to, to go to school. So, I mean, we have to, move forward and keep trying to do these things, but keep all those other things in line. Yes. You know, you have to keep doing the mitigating uh, actions that you're doing, uh, keep up with them and then move forward and, and have kids be active, and be in sports and do things, you know, yeah. you have, you have I, to move think, forward. And I think being a coach and a business owner, like you guys are, it's, and other club owners I talked to, I think there's a fine, there's a, there's a fear factor there too, because you guys are like, okay, I love my kids and I, I know they need to get out of the house and be back in the room, but all it takes is one for me to hear from a lawyer, hear from the mad parent, hear from the angry doctor, you know, hear from the, all this stuff. So um, it's, I, feel for, I feel for the gym owners and the club owners. So we're, I don't know if we're unique or not, but I was just thinking of this, like, we both have kids that come into this room and do this. So it's not, it is business, you know, and we want to keep things going, but it's also very personal. My kid's in this room every week and 
hers are too. So, uh, you know, it's both things. Like we're definitely thinking of the safety because it's personal. Our kids are here. Yeah. And, and but it's we're trying to weigh it out and do it the right way. Yeah. And, and it's, it's these, it's these club owners livelihoods too. I mean, this is how a lot of them make a living. This is how you make a living. Um, so if someone came in and put a padlock on the door because a kid got sick, it sucks. So I don't think, I mean, if there are club owners out there, club coaches out there that are not, are, are not taking precaution and just throwing caution to the wind, then they're just foolish. So I, I don't think there's anybody out there doing that. I, I got to, I got to hope so. Right. I think everybody yeah. I hope is taking the right steps, but uh, Mickey, man. So uh, ACC wrestling looks like it's going to happen, right? Yeah. As of now, as of now, it looks like it's going to happen. I mean, we're planning like coach Gavin keeps saying to us, he's like, no matter what, we're going to stay ready. Uh, I mean, that's just like who we are and uh, what we do, but uh yeah, as of now, it's it's supposed to be on. So hopefully, I'm I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we we get a chance here. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, I I, I wanted to bounce back to you. You looked really bored out there outside, so I was like, no. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Get him talking a little bit here. Uh, a few listening. things. First of all, what uh, what weight will you wrestle this year? Yeah, I'm gonna go 133. I've been there the last three years basically since i've been in college i've been a, a 133 pounder but yeah i'll stay there it's not a hard hard weight class for me to make so i'll stay wow. it's a hard weight class to be in though in this country man that's a buzzsaw the guy yeah it definitely is uh another good thing a buddy of mine uh jacob hugley i don't know if he's listening but uh he just uh he's starting he just started an acc wrestling podcast where he's just going to focus on ACC wrestling so that's uh, awesome I'll have to I'll have to let him know to reach out to you man get you on there all right yeah for sure yeah he just did his first interview which was NATO because NATO took the ACC job at Duke so uh but he'll be doing rankings every week and he'll be doing all sorts of stuff so uh, it'll be good uh I'm sure he'd love to have you on there yeah that'd be awesome I'm definitely in and man, how how intense is your coach? I had him on, I had him on the show, man, and you could tell that he's very passionate in, in what he does. Yeah, he's uh he's one of a kind for sure. Keith is Keith. Uh, it's funny, like he has like a uh, a sense of humor that uh, it, it's really funny. But like some people, I feel like, especially like people that don't know him, just really think he's like really intense. But uh, I feel like that's just uh, his sense of humor. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a cool dude and, uh, having him in the room has been awesome. Um, and, and, uh, who the host, I had Headley on too. Oh yeah. Headley's, Headley's like a, a training partner, basically. I mean, he's, he's the hardest dude to finish on in, <laughs> like ever, ever. You can, he just give you your leg, his leg and you, you can't finish. It's like impossible. So, um. I was trying to see here. I had, I had all the, uh, you know, Jacob came on and did his, uh, what he thought the ACC was going to look like this year. I don't know. I was going to go, I was going to try and find uh, where he put you, but I, I, I have to go all the way back. I can't find these attachments. But uh, Of how the, the ACC, like, individual is going to be, or, like, team-wise? Yeah, I think he did. I think he did team and individual I was gonna uh, say, should be. yeah Pitt I think he says Pitt was right in the middle of the pack this year um but I don't know uh I don't know where he had you I was trying to oh, oh whoa. Uh, hey I'll show you. you saw it right he it picked be, your number one, one. Number three we didn't have yeah. to see it we don't have to see it <laughs> oh yeah he picked you number one, dude. Look yeah. at that. He's got you at 133. He's got you he's one. He's won the ACC here two years in a row. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't suck, right? Yes. Yeah, that doesn't suck. Uh, I hear you. <laughs> so he's got you one, <laughs> Corbin Myers two, Jamie Hernandez three, Louis Hayes four. Oh, uh, Corbin Trombley, Myers. Trombley five and Campbell six. Yeah. That makes sense. I, I think I, I've wrestled every single person in that bracket before, so 
Um, it's crazy. I've wrestled Corbin Myers like the whole way back to high school. But uh, yeah, I've wrestled all of them before. The year before last year, I wrestled Corbin in like the ACC semis. And then uh, this past year, I wrestled uh, that Hernandez in the finals and uh, Louis Hayes in the semis. So I've wrestled them all plenty of times. <laughs> wow. So uh, what are your what are your goals this year? I mean, national title, if we have a national tournament, <laughs> I hope that happens. Uh, I always set the bar high. Um, and that's what I mean. I think I can do it. I, I mean, I'm right there with any guy in the country. I just got to put it together at the right time, really. But, I mean, yeah, I want to win national title. And uh, I'm probably going to compete at the, like, the Open for, like, the world team trials and uh, see if I can make a world team uh, at senior level. And also U23. I'll probably do both if they have them. I mean, that all depends on uh, this whole – what, what happens with uh, COVID and everything. But as of now, the plan is to wrestle both. So, Wow. Well, um, well, you have another fan here. I've had so many <laughs> awesome wrestlers come on from, from like kids that are 10 years old all the way through college and world. And I tell people, I don't know how, like what happens when both of you are wrestling each other? I'm like, who do I root for now? I'm like, <laughs> I, I like both those guys. Right. <laughs> and uh, Yeah. Um, definitely. I've got so many people to follow now, but um, uh, I'll for sure. Uh, I'll have to get you hooked up with, with Hughley so he can get you on the show, man. That's pretty cool. He's starting it out now. And, uh, you know, obviously you wouldn't be a bad guy for him to have on. So yeah, tell him to reach out. I'll definitely do it for sure. So, um, talk about rough house wrestling coach, man. I know you guys, uh, a very, uh, a very good club up there. It's been going on for a while up in PA. And, um, so tell us what, what's the age brackets that are in the room. Uh, do you do travel? Do you team? Uh, what's your philosophy, goals? Yeah, um, so it's, uh, you know, you start with a group of kids. And then, it, so what it seems like to me, you know, we started with six-year-olds. And so they're the oldest kids that I have. And they're now 13, 12, and 13. So I have I have them and down. You know, and when those 13-year-olds are seniors, then I'll have seniors down, you know. I'm kind of grown with a group of kids here. Oh, but, wow. Um, so you take them from like little guy all the way off to high school and then you start over again. No. So this is the first round for me. I started with the young group of kids first time. Oh, wow. And as they get older, we just fill in from the bottom. So eventually we'll have. You'll have like a rotation. Of every grade. Right. But and right kids, now it's pretty much like eighth grade to, and under. And those kids starting to come back and help out. Right. Yeah. Mickey comes back and helps out. Yeah, that's going to be the way. But, you know, it's it's real um, – try to make it like a family here. You know, we're close, and uh, it's not a huge club, but it's not small. I mean, we probably have for 50 kids in season, in and out. Maybe they don't come every day, but, you know, once a week some kids come. But there's got to be over 50 kids that go total. And um, – there the philosophy is really uh fundamental technique and athletic development you know you have to be strong and you have to be fit and you have to be athletic um and then you can do any sport you want after that you know and then you just pound the, the uh the fundamentals you know we do have people like mickey come and we have other technicians come that teach uh fun moves to learn you know and i teach some fun moves to learn but you always got to come back to the, the there's like four or five things you need to know and what makes uh, what makes Pennsylvania the like the wrestling? Oh capital? no! To me, it's just it was it's a juggernaut now. I mean, it was it it had a lot of good wrestlers, and that made a lot more good wrestlers. The depth there's so much depth here. It's you have to be good to be here and wrestle. So it's just a big snowball that keeps rolling now. You know. I mean, uh, it, the other thing in the beginning that go ahead, thing that I think thing that I think started it I mean we have um how many D1 schools are there in Pennsylvania for for college and you know Clarion Bloomsburg Lock Haven the small ones Penn State Pitt Lehigh so those smaller schools that like Clarion Edinburgh I didn't say but they're unbelievable wrestling Penn. Um, those hmm? Penn. Penn. yeah so I think that um it was always just big here, you know, you could go uh, and wrestle 
after high school at a smaller school that played D2 and everything else, and they were D1 in wrestling. And I think that really built the, the uh, state up. And it's got to be crazy. Like when I talk to guys about working out in a room in PA, it's like you look over your shoulder and there's national champs, state champs, uh, college champs, uh, Olympians. They say you could walk into a grocery store where, you know, kids down here, when when you hear that, like, a Dolph is going to be in the room or a, or, or a high-level wrestler is coming in the room, it's it's a really, really big deal. But the kids up there seem to have that every day, right? They look to the left. Look yeah, to the well, right. that snowball is just going to keep rolling, too, because even, you know, I wrestled at BA my whole life, and I had a lot of dads to coach, and I would have a good coach here and there. But now you could be – uh, seven years old and you could have an Olympian for a coach you know there's just like you there's a lot of clubs that have a really good rep yeah that's crazy national champions all Americans Olympians and they're teaching eight-year-olds so think about how good their those kids are going to be you know yeah I, I had uh, I don't know what happened to Mickey there but <laughs> uh, I had uh, you know the whole mad advantage the show with uh it's got the Jude, Jude Swisher on it, which is, uh, I think he was fourth in the state of Pennsylvania this year at, uh, I think he's 16 years old, but he, he's talking about practicing and he's, he's in a room practicing and there's David Taylor coaching him. He's like, yeah. Yeah. And that's not like yeah. even a thing. David yeah. Taylor had that's M3, you know, up near state college. They have youth there. And the other coaches there are tough guys too, you know. Yeah, I had Eric on the show. He was he was awesome. Four time NAIA champ or whatever he was. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was fun to talk to, man. I, I had a really good time. Um, but man, it, it's uh, super cool to have you guys on and, and get to meet you guys. And I tell people that I can't wait to to get out into the country and get to meet everybody from yeah, absolutely. You your show because. You know, I had a purpose when I started it, and I never, I never expected to. I mean, in one day, I've got Mickey Philippe, Philippi and and Jack Mueller on in one day. That's crazy. That, how cool is that, right? And then um, next, I've got Josh Boskin coming on from Boskin Trained and Wrestling Camps, and I never would have imagined. I just wanted to talk wrestling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Hear it. And, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. We, we hear you, we just don't see you. Yeah, my uh, video camera, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm trying <laughs> to figure this out. <laughs> uh, that's all right. Um, but it's been fun, and I really appreciate you reaching out, Haley. I know we spoke a little bit, and uh, it was just cool to talk to you. And I was like, I was like, if you want to come on, great. If you don't, great. Whatever, we're friends anyway now, so we'll talk. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you reached out and, and signed up, and and I'm glad to I'm glad you spoke about that because I think we hear a lot of opinions from people that I don't want to say shouldn't have opinions, but I think they're yeah. they're like Facebook doctors. <laughs> or anesthetists. Yeah, or Facebook yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, I think I posted the other day, I'm like, hey, I'd love for you if you put your opinion on a topic, can you put your title to like right. you know, like uh, this is my topic and I'm Dan, a dumbass. Like just <laughs> something so that we know how, how much, at what level should we believe you? Like I want to, yeah. Want that, but, um, but that's okay. Well, uh, I do my 10 questions. Are you guys ready? Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Mickey, you with us? Yeah, I'm here. I can uh, hear you. Uh, You'll look a lot better on my podcast when I put it on podcast so no one will see you. <laughs> uh, uh, Dominic's or Tin Shack Barbecue? What is that? Dominic's. Dominic's. <laughs> he knew. Uh, Steelers or know. Penguins? Oh, that's hard. What did he say? Steelers or Penguins? He said that's hard. Steelers. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've become a big. I've, we've had three Stanley Cups in my lifetime. He so like, there. there he is. That's yeah, true, I'm, I I'm, guess, I'm, right? Yeah. Well, what what was your choice on Dominic's or Tin Shack Barbecue? 
I don't know what either of those are. So, Oh, they're in your town because that's where I found them. But maybe I was looking at a different Pennsylvania. He knew. No, yeah, I just picked I Dominic's because that's my middle name. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, none of us knew. Maybe I said, what are they? I don't know. Maybe I was in the wrong place. What about what about Burger Burger or Carolyn Dave? Do you know that? Listen, Dairy's got like two places. We have like two places in Dairy. <laughs> and that's oh, that it. Sucks. Okay. I'm gonna make shit up then. Sorry. All right. Drums or flats? Drums, Drums or, or what? Flats. Drums. The strip. Flats. Chicken wings. Chicken wings. Oh, he, he said chicken strips. <laughs> I'd go with drums. That's <laughs> awesome. That's what uh, I said drums. All right, the Carnegie Science Center or Museum of Art? Oh, uh, as a kid, the Carnegie Science Center. What was but the other one? Museum, Museum of Art. Art. I've been there. It's not bad here. I'm there. sure you have. Uh, Carnegie <laughs> Science Center. <laughs> Carnegie. Carnegie, sorry. Well, I'm not going to ask you about this one because I was in the wrong town. So we'll, we'll let's say, um, isn't Pennsylvania known for like their rectangle pizza? Well, Dairy's known for their pizza, though. But I don't know about. All right. Record. Okay. Pepperoni or sausage? Sausage. Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> Pepperoni or sausage? Oh, sausage. <laughs> I could just imagine what's happening right now. Um, <laughs> Duquesne Incline or Gateway Clipper Fleet? Oh. Incline. I feel like the, the incline is like quicker though. So it depends on how, how you want your experience. <laughs> I knew a wrestler at Pitt that climbed up that incline. <laughs> Don't oh, share his name. No, I won't. Was he sober? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. All yeah. right. Dumplings or raviolis? Ravioli. Ravioli. Oh, raviolis. Dumplings. Dumplings. All right. Uh, Kennywood Park or the Pit Zoo? Ooh. Uh, Kennywood. That's a tie. Kennywood. I haven't been to Kennywood in a long time. Definitely Kennywood. Dominic's is by Lynch Field, is what I'm being told right now. Okay. Yeah, that's – I've never heard of it. <laughs> well, somebody did. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate you. Matt Ruffner heard of it. There you go, Matt. My oh, man. Good job, Matt. Good job. Way to come up big, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> he always does. He yeah. always comes up big. Yeah, way to show He's up. Had a way baby girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. PNC Park or Heinz Field? Mm, PNC Park is beautiful. But the Steelers, uh, I mean, the Pirates. I'm mad at the Pirates right now, though. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah you they just go with my love you baseball. Go with <laughs> Somebody said Matt knows everything. Rocky Anderson, Matt knows everything. Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Um, I don't know what else to ask. Not everything, but a lot. Yeah, I would say everything. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, so is there a match so far in college that you would want back? You talking to me? Yeah. Is there one I want back? Uh, we have yeah. one that we'll take back. Yeah, I could think of one I could yeah. take back. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, elaborate. Oh, about it. Do, we, do we have to talk about it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll talk about it. It was, uh, if I had to take one back, it would probably be the round of 12 my first year at Nationals. That'd be the one. Actually, if I – the one before that would even be better because then it's like a guarantee, you know. The one yeah. before that would have been better. In the court, I lost in the quarterfinals, and I dropped down to the round of twelve. But uh, who did you lose to? Fletcher in the quarters, 
and oh, then RBY for the round as well. That's your boy, isn't it? What'd you say? That's your boy, isn't it? Yeah, we've wrestled since we were about, I don't know, seven. Like, it's ridiculous I, at this I, point. I'd hate to say anything, but our Florida guy whooped his ass on the rooftop. Oh, You're talking about uh, Lugo. Pat Lugo. Oh. <laughs> Let's the just say there was, a, there was a pretty yeah, big weight, weight difference. difference. <laughs> hey, a I, figured big weight difference. You, I figured you guys would get fired up if I threw that out there. <laughs> you might have. Now you're you stirring. Have, yeah. Now yeah, you're, you're just stirring. stirring. No, but he looked, uh, he looked really good at the flow. Yeah, no, he's he's tough. That, that match with Lugo, I don't know, wasn't his best performance, but he's beast. Yeah. That's all right. That's what Jack Mueller said when we asked him about the RBY match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah. Now, I asked him because they're training a little bit together in New Jersey, uh, Jack with RBY and Seabass. And I asked yeah. him, are you guys going to do like the Rocky Apollo Creed, like ding, ding in the back room, like have a, and, and, I, and then I remembered he's like 20 years old. I wonder if he even knows what Rocky and Apollo Creed is, but I tried. Tried to ask. Oh, that, <laughs> everyone knows Rocky. Come on. Right. Yeah, that's timeless. Yeah, he laughed, so I knew. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, what? Matt Ruffner, fighting words. <laughs> hey, uh, no, all, all respect. I love I like Fletcher. I, I watched him wrestle at Flow. He he put on work that time too. And uh obviously I need to uh, I need to rep my Florida guy. Uh because <laughs> I love Lugo too, but uh, I still would like to have you on, Pletcher, man. I promise I won't. I won't bring up Lugo beating you on the rooftop. Okay, okay, I may. Okay, I may ask you about it. Okay, I may. Yeah, I may ask you about it. All right, that probably is gonna not get you on my show, but I, I'm trying. No, <laughs> he's awesome, man. I love watching him wrestle, and man, I don't know how anybody moves that guy though. His legs look like they're. Uh, Bumps. two inches around but this has been amazing thank you so much Haley and, and and coach and obviously to get Mickey on with me that's awesome man one of uh one of college's amazing wrestlers here one of our country's amazing wrestlers this has just been an honor to get to meet all of you so thank you for putting this together thanks for having us yeah thanks thanks for having us yeah it was awesome someone uh Jamie Beatrice said Ianese or Rosemary's Pizza? Ooh, oh, don't make me do that's that. Cut, that's cutting too. Rosemary's. I hate the. I, yeah, I gotta get Rosemary's. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Rosemary's. I feel bad doing that, but that's awesome. I love that these questions have taken flight. I need to call somebody and be like, "Yo, sponsor the ten questions." Yes. I yes. <laughs> I feel bad picking one there, but it's definitely Rosemary's. Yeah, I'm not picking. <laughs> They're both good. <laughs> Nice. Well, hey, again, um, it's always an honor to have, have anyone on my show. And uh, I always say the show's about you, not me. So thank you for coming on and doing this. And uh, I'll have to get one of your logos up on the wall behind there. I don't know which one. Yeah. There's like seven of them. So I got to figure out which one to put up there. <clears throat> I'll just throw them all up there. What the heck? And uh, Mickey, are you, are you on Facebook or Instagram or anything? Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I'll, I'll, I'll IG you my my cell so we can get together and I'll get uh, I'll get you with Hughley so you can get on his show. Yeah, sounds good. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thanks so much. And everybody, just as I tell people, keep kicking life's ass, man, and, and keep doing your thing. Later. And thank Thanks, you, Daniel. Thank you for the education, Miss Anathem. Thank you. <laughs>